Welcome to episode one of the dog training experience. I can't believe this is actually happening. We're on our way right now to go pick up my brand new puppy, Inertia. It's been so many years since I've had a puppy, so I'm beyond excited to go through this experience once again and share the entire experience of raising and training a dog with you guys. I'm on my way to Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, look at her. Good to see you. Oh, look at you. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, are you so cute? You got so big. You just keep growing, stop growing. She looks great. I'm Zach George. I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. First, we're gonna make a stop at the vet to make sure Inertia is healthy and ready for her drive home tomorrow. Let's go get you checked out. We're hanging out at the vet right now, waiting on our appointment. Got a little bit of her kibble right now, just getting her used to the environment. I'm just trying to straight away get that positive association going with new places. Everything checked out with her. She looks really good. We're actually gonna stay in town an extra day or so. We're gonna give her that additional socialization experience by being in the hotel. I wanna condition her to a few things, teach her about the clicker, teach her about the harness, and. Get Get her collar on, all of that. And I just don't want to rush her into like a long road trip immediately. We're back at the hotel now. I've got my pup box with me because I am a customer. They actually send you stuff every single month based on your dog's age. This is a two month pup box. Let's see what we got here. We have some fun toys and we have different texture toy here. With a two month old dog, you're gonna need stain and odor remover. I'm gonna be using these treats in just a minute. Chew toys, wipes. If you're interested in trying pup box, you can get 50% off of your first box when you sign up or a three, six, or 12 month subscription by going to pupbox.com slash Zach and using discount code Zach. I'm gonna have that link in the description below. My intention at this point is to get her started with clicker training. I love clicker training because it's a really handy device that is very good at communicating to your dog when you like what they're doing. But first you have to teach them that this clicking sound means they're going to get a reward. I'm making them real small, about that size right there. This is a real simple process. It just takes a few minutes to do. Notice I'm clicking a little bit away from her. I don't want to go right in her face and click. For some dogs, that sound can startle them. See, she's looking at that clicker. So I like that. To be clear, the click doesn't tell your dog to do something. It simply communicates that you like what they just did. Yes, there we go. And that's kind of a magical moment. I right, good. I feel like she's starting to make the connection here. The first thing I want to do is get a nurse her comfortable with wearing a collar and then we'll graduate to the harness. I think it's important we go really slow with every new thing that we do with our dog just to get them really comfortable. Gonna let her investigate it. I like that she is taking an interest in it. Gonna touch her on the head with it. Look at that, really, really healthy reaction. Let's come up under the chin here. Start to buckle it, let go. The point is, I don't want to just strap it on her, wait for her to freak out. I want to get her really comfortable with every little thing that I do. This builds trust, and her general behavior right now is just outstanding. I'm so proud of you. I'm being very liberal on my rewards at this young age. As you can see, she's going through an adjustment period with the collar on, too. She's kind of being a bit goofy, like, wait, what is that on my neck? We can get started with her harness. I'm gonna let her sniff it and everything. See, a lot of dogs will freak out over stuff like this because we just do this in a hurry when we're in a rush, but if you take your time in the beginning, things will go way more smoothly. I'm gonna slip this over her head slowly. This can be a clumsy process for dog trainers too. Now that whole process can take anywhere between five minutes and an hour, it just depends on your dog. We're off to a good start, Inertia. Doing a good job. Now I can finally leash you. Having a young dog on leash is a too much freedom too early is the biggest mistake people with puppies make, and I'm determined not to make that mistake. We're gonna pop the leash on, and now I have control over environment. By the way, I cover everything dog training related in my books. They're a great way for you to stay on track whether you have a new puppy like Inertia or an older dog. Check the description for the links. I'm gonna let her sleep right now because she's had a long morning. I was so anxious to get her conditioned to the clicker to then put on the harness and the collar so that I can start building this communication. Desensitizing a dog to the sounds of the world and observing how they react to their surroundings will help you get to know a new dog better. We want to take advantage of the fact that she has been so well socialized for the first few weeks of her life, which was really important to me and as evidenced by the volume of my voice right now, she is just passed out. In other words, since she appears to be in a deep sleep, rather than whispering and tiptoeing around her, 
I'm intentionally speaking in a louder voice in the hope that she'll be more relaxed in the future when abrupt or loud sounds happen. With puppies, it's a good idea to expose them to a variety of sounds, both ones that occur without your expecting them and ones that you create artificially. Okay. Look at that. The loud sound that just woke her up. Which is our window being Getting... pressure washed at the hotel. She reacted beautifully there. No reward is necessary as she's naturally relaxed right now. I'm gonna run out to the car to grab something, but I wanna see how she reacts to this door handle because these hotel doors, you know, they're kinda loud. Look at that, see that? Good camera work there, producer Bree. Thank you. Too much, look at that. So I found the point that startled her right there. That was interesting. I stopped immediately, because I want to find out where her threshold is. Where does she go from being not sound sensitive to sound sensitive while sleeping under these circumstances? It's always a quest to understand every thought the dog makes, but we can never truly understand what they're thinking. But it's sure interesting to try, isn't it? And now for her first introduction to the crate. My original plan was to introduce the crate by tossing treats in and encouraging inertia to go in and out of the crate. However, puppies love to sleep for extended periods of time and sleeping can be a great time to introduce them to some new things. This is a bit risky but I'm going to try to pick her up, hope that she remains sleeping and place her in this crate right here with the door wide open in the spirit of slowly introducing her to new things. The point of a crate is to be able to easily control your dog's environment for short periods of time when you cannot directly tend to them. Getting your dog comfortable with a crate is a very positive thing and success but what do you do when an eight week old puppy awakens from a nap? She just woke up. She's probably gotta go pee. Immediately taking a dog outside after they've been sleeping can be tough since most puppies will immediately want to pee. Since it's a fair distance to the closest safe area for her to pee, I want to have an indoor option by having these pads nearby. Also by having her on leash, I'm able to keep her right on the pads. This is her first experience on a leash and harness and she's doing really well. I'm just gonna get right back into training because the whole theme of raising a puppy is really understanding that dogs are learning at every moment. She's having the habit of going to the ground a lot, sniffing the ground a lot, biting at the carpet. I really need to focus on getting her eyes on me. So I'm just going to do look at me training sessions, clicking and treating anytime I have eye contact with her just to let her know, wow, you look at me, I really like that. Because when you have your dog's eyes on you, you can really communicate with them much better. I'm getting her to look at me and I'm saying her name at the same time because I want her to equate her name with looking at me. Hey, that wasn't bad for a mini training session. We'll come Cover this in more depth in future episodes though. But we really need to do some playing right now. The bond is the most important thing you have with a dog. Get them into you and you gotta get into them. And that's what we're in the process of doing right now. And I love doing that through play. I think it's time for inertia to get another nap. Eight week old puppies need between 18 and 20 hours of sleep per day. Okay, now that she's awake, let's go to town and introduce her to some strangers. Oh, check it out. There's a dock diving event in town. Maybe someday inertia. When you have a puppy it feels like you're a celebrity because everyone wants to come up and talk to your dog. Can I hold her? Yeah, absolutely. Please hold her. It's great for her to have other people hold her and interact with her, especially when they're young like this. Underneath. Go under right here. There you go. That's the good spot. That's the, that's the good spot. It's exactly right. What kind of puppy is it? She is a border collie. Well, thank you for helping me train, guys. This is obviously the first of many public outings for Inertia. I'm just trying to condition her to new environments and new people and teach her that these things are normal. After all, the way to get your dog listening to you everywhere is to work with them and train with them everywhere possible and get them interacting with people and new situations as much as reasonably possible. She's getting a little anxious. There is such a thing as too much socialization. If you notice that your dog is getting overwhelmed or not taking to it very well, just take a step back. You may have noticed a moment ago when she was being pet, she got a little anxious and started whining. I think it's best to exercise caution here. Time for a potty break. We found a secluded spot that probably a lot of dogs don't frequent. So we're gonna see if she's gonna go potty out here. So this time she didn't have to go, but much better to give them too many opportunities to relieve themselves than too few. All right, Inertia, I think we need to go back to the hotel for another nap. She's looking peppy now. Let's play. So basically what we're doing right now, Bree and I, is we're playing this back and forth game, just tossing the toy back and forth, getting her used to doing some mild exercise indoors. Go ahead and entice her to pounce on it by, yep. Good, and give her a little tug there. Keeping her motivated, Bree, you're very good at this. Thanks. Go ahead and work on let go by making the toy boring. Just make it still. 
then when she lets go, give her a yes and toss it. You could use the clicker with this too. So I'm using yes and the clicker, just whatever I feel like. So since she keeps losing it like that, see she tracks it when you keep it low in front of her. Oh look, that's a border collie. Look at that. La 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 la. Come here. Oh, good girl, good girl. Where's your toy? Come here. Yes, good, that's a nice little fetch. You're gonna be fine. After all this playing, it's finally time to go to bed for a nurse's first night with us. Since I'm in a hotel, I don't have an ideal containment system. And since I really wanna take my time getting her used to her crate, we put together a makeshift pen slash crate combo area with our luggage and other stuff we brought from our trip. I'm avoiding putting the door on just yet because I wanna be very delicate about closing the door. I really want her to like her crate. I want her to view this as her bedroom and just a place where she feels really comfortable. Keep in mind, not all dogs like crates. I still don't know how she's gonna take to the crate long term. So this is very much an experiment. Tomorrow night, we'll have a much more formal setup for her. It's been very convenient to just quickly pick her up and put her into her sleeping area, and she usually has just been falling right back asleep. We've done this a couple of times today, although it's worth pointing out that I'm only picking her up and putting her in her sleeping area when she falls asleep on her own. When she's conscious, I'll teach her how to voluntarily and willingly go in and out of her crate. And so she doesn't get too bored, I'm going to give her this pup box chew toy. We've got her other stuffed animal. She, this is her toy of the day, she's really loved this one. So right now it's 12, 11 a.m. We have a thunderstorm going on outside. Now she's getting a little whiny, which is understandable. I'm gonna go ahead and give her some food right now. Just in the off chance she might be a little extra hungry. We are in a motel, we do have neighbors. It appears to be pretty sold out here. So I, I've gotta keep her from barking too much. I guess a lot of you might deal with this if you have apartments or condominiums. So I'm going to encourage her to be quiet. Quiet. I'm trying to find just really brief moments of quiet to go ahead and reward her with right now. I'm clicking and offering her treats during moments of quiet. Good, there was a tiny bit of quiet there. I'm gonna go ahead and reward that. Which also have the additional benefit of conditioning inertia during the storm. After all, if great treats come out during her first storm with us, then she's less likely to feel anxious in the future, especially if I keep this up. This is just normal anxiety right now. I'm just trying to temper it before it gets more out of control. This is something you just plan for when you have a new dog those first several nights. Quiet, see, just during those small moments of relaxation and quiet, and I'm clicking her and rewarding her. It's really meticulous right now. I'm trying not to let that whining get out of control. You see, I'm not waiting for her to start wanting to be like, no, be quiet. You might also notice she's not in her crate right now. She's lying on the pads. I'm totally okay with that. I don't want to add to her anxiety. The time when so many people get particularly frustrated with a puppy, especially during the middle of the night, it's not when you want to train, you want to get your sleep. But just factor in that you're going to have to do this in most cases with a puppy as they're acclimating. Just be patient, look for those small moments. But you can see how she's lying down now. She's much more in that curled up, relaxed state. Yes. All right, well, I just woke up. Inertia is out of her enclosure. Looks like Zach went with a different strategy last night. I would say that the first night was much as expected. I mean, she whined about what, three or four times throughout the night, something like that? Yes, four times. Four times. and. I was able to have some success with reassuring her and everything, but ultimately I ended up just caving, <laughs> getting on the floor and sleeping with her. Because, I mean, you have to have a lot of empathy with a new puppy and understand that, I mean, their world is just changing so fast. Ah, she's peeing, good job. <laughs> You're like a leaky water balloon, you pee so much. We're just about to head back to New Orleans right now, but I want to definitely give Inertia some exercise and get that edge off before we go. So we're gonna do a lot of self-directed free play. Until a puppy is vaccinated, it's vital to avoid areas where other dogs likely frequent. And right now she's very stimulated. I'll bet she wouldn't even take a treat if I gave it to her right now. Let me see. Wanna cheat? 
empty because she's so excited right now and taking in the world. So I'm just gonna let her do that and not focus on having a regimented structured training exercise. This is important for young dogs. Bree is gonna wipe her paws off because she was walking. We're doing our best to keep her away from areas that might've been frequented by dogs we don't know, but you can never be too safe. So we're gonna wipe her feet down. These also came with our pup box, you might recall. So they're quite handy, very practical. And because she was just exercised, she's a lot more likely to be tolerant of this. So to make the process go extra smooth, we're gonna go ahead and give her some treats. When you're transporting a new puppy, of course, you have gotta be prepared for some minor anxiety. And so we do the treats just to kind of put her at ease and let her know, hey, there's good stuff here. It's always a good idea that if you're gonna pick up a dog like this and you have a long road trip, have someone that can tend to the dog directly if possible. Inertia is passed out, but you know what? That doesn't mean I can't do some training. One thing that I want to do with her while she's going through this major sleeping phase is really get her comfortable with touch, get them comfortable with being touched in those more sensitive areas like their ears, their feet, maybe even their teeth, their gums. Let's get her tail and see what she does. So a road trip can be a great time to do this kind of training. We're about two hours into our road trip so far and everything's going pretty smoothly. Okay, time for a potty break. We're gonna charge up the car and get to a spot where it's unlikely that other dogs visit since inertia needs additional vaccinations. Immediately, her potty training is going so well. Good girl. That's interesting. She's, she's scared of the fire hydrant right here and her anxiety might be too high for me to take this on right now. I don't know that I want to insist that she go near her, but we came up to it and she froze up. Oh my gosh, a train. You just can't beat the real world and what public delivers. I mean, at first she was scared of the fire hydrant, but then a train came and made her completely nervous. I think she did all right, but right now I'm just reassuring her. There's no harm in reassuring your dog when they become a bit nervous like that. We've got some heavy rain and inertia seems to be quite at home and quite comfortable. It's not phasing her a bit. Hmm. What else can we do to give Inertia some useful experiences while on a road trip? I'd like to see how she does with some music. I don't know that she's ever heard music before. Oh, turn it down. You see her react, that was so interesting. Good girl. She noticed it for sure. Desensitizing to like this artificial electronic sound that she's never heard. The more deliberately you expose your dog to things, hopefully the better and more accepting they'll be of those things. Go ahead and change the song. Oh, she likes this one, look at her. Go ahead and turn it up a little bit. I think that's a good exposure for now. We've been on the road like 10 hours now. It's time to stop and give Inertia some playtime. Puppies dig a lot too. I'm gonna try to re-divert her attention and work on some real life leave-its here. So I haven't had a formal real life leave-it training session with her. She doesn't yet know her name, so I'm gonna whistle, do whatever I can to get her to pay attention to me. Yeah. But here's the thing, dogs don't automatically just know what a toy is. So let's see if I can spark some interest with this toy and in this new environment. She wasn't really responding before. See how I just made it real, real exciting and she goes, what? That's what I mean sometimes when I say make the toy more interesting. Give her a little tug right there, keep it interesting, let her win. Ultimately, I'm trying to find out if she's the kind of dog that will play on cue when you break out any toy, or maybe she's the kind of dog who's like, yeah, I like to play sometimes, sometimes I don't. She's too young for me to tell that, but I can get some early indicators. Inertia slept for the last leg of the drive, and now it's time to finally show her her new home. Inertia, look, we're home her first time walking through the door. Well, it's been 36 hours and the fun continues. Stay tuned for the next episode. Let me know what you'd like to see Inertia learn. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see Inertia's progress. If you like videos like this, you will really like our Instagram, at Zach George. I'm gonna have that link in the description below. I do live training with her over there and show you what she's learning. Sign up to get 50% off of your first pup box when you sign up for a three, six or 12 month subscription. That link will be below too. In the next episode, we're gonna find out what Inertia's first stay at home it's like and it's going to be action packed.